Hi everyone, this is the Chuta Baba from Nightlight Astrology and these are your sun and rising sign horoscopes for the month of August 2020. In this video, we're going to take a look at the air signs, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. So um, this month is quirky because um, there are literally transits taking place perfecting just about every day of the month. I think it's, the, it's definitely the busiest month of 2020 so far in terms of just the sheer number of transits. Um, I don't think it's quite as powerful as, say, you know, eclipse season coming through with all the wild Jupiter-Pluto stuff. Um, it feels to me like it's, it's busy, but um, kind of preparatory, almost like it's, it's preparing us for an autumn that's going to be pretty intense. So I feel like this is kind of like a preview and a lot of things are moving. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, I can't, it would take me hours literally to break down every sign, all of the transits. So I'm going to be running through these fairly quickly, keeping it a little bit more simple just to get through it all. Um, but let's go ahead and start with um, Libra. So this is, uh, I recommend your rising sign. If you're a Libra rising, I think this fits the best. You can also do these for your sun sign. Um, so, okay, so... Uh, at the very beginning of the month, oh, and you know what I'm just realizing? I, I need to plug my outer planets in real quick here. Here we go. So at the very beginning of the month, um, what you're going to notice is that the planet Uranus and the sun are getting into a square with one another. Now, um, between the 11th and the 8th houses, uh, you think about breakthroughs and, you know, kind of a, a revolutionary moment whenever the sun contacts Uranus, where there's a greater sense of individuating, of coming into your own, of becoming more of that person that you feel like you were meant to be. And this has something to do with groups or organizations and different kinds of karmic debts or obligations that might be associated uh, with such groups or organizations. Um, that's an 11th house, 8th house combination. I was turning my phone off here so it doesn't beep. So um, that's, the, that's, that's what I would look for at the beginning of the month if you're a Libra rising. Things within a group or among friends uh, changing and uh, there being some greater freedom as a result. That's one thing that comes to mind. Now, if we go to um, the third, uh, Mercury is going to be opposite Saturn between your 10th and your fourth house. Watch for communication around the topics of home, family, and the workplace to perhaps be a little bit more um, dramatic or intense. Uh, but also, you know, you might be working something out between these two polar opposite areas of the chart, home and the, the more, your, your more like private life and your public life. Um, so if we keep going along. We go to August 3rd into 4th. Uh, Venus is going to conjoin the North Node in the ninth house for you if you're Libra rising. Um, the North Node of the Moon is going to amplify Venusian things within the ninth house context. So you think about the overlap between relationships or friendships or love, romance, sexuality in the place of higher education, foreign countries, long journeys, religion, and spirituality. Um, so watch for those topics uh, right around the um, third and the fourth. Now on the third, there's also going to be a full moon and the full moon is in Aquarius in your fifth house. Now the fifth house is a place of creativity. It's also a place of joy, pleasure, happiness, romance, children, uh, pregnancy. So these topics will be pronounced. And remember that uh, this full moon is also being uh, activated by Uranus. There's an, a Uranus square to this full moon. And that means the Uranian theme is really around this month, at the start of the month, at the full moon at the beginning of the month. So you kind of expect the unexpected with Uranus. You also think about karmic debts or obligations, kind of eighth house topics coming up relative to the topics of, you know, children, pleasure, pregnancy, romance, etc. So, um, you know, it might be a little like kind of kind of that uh, those unexpected disruptions of Uranus closer to the beginning of the month and some of these uh, topics that may sort of uh, pop up simultaneously. It's very busy at the very beginning of the month. Uh, on the fourth, Mars is going to square um, Jupiter from your seventh house to your fourth house. Uh, that can bring up um, uh, kind of a communication between here's the the god of war in the seventh house of love and relationships squaring Jupiter in the house of home and family and that can really amplify the themes of heroism courage um, maybe facing or confronting difficult things feeling of um, maybe differing views or beliefs or attitudes or approaches to life or politics or religion that are somehow cropping up between 
the space, your say your home and family space, your living space, your private internal life, and um, the topic or subject of relationships or people that you're intimate with. Um, so those those themes are pretty active. Again, like the first week of August is just like whoa, very busy. Uh, then we go forward a little bit more to the ninth and the tenth. And between the 9th and the 10th, Mercury is going to square Uranus. Now, Mercury square Uranus is uh, another really good moment in terms of um, just uh, breakthroughs in, uh, let's say, communication, learning, teachers, or important ideas that are entering your life and changing your perspective somehow, some kind of new or different technology, um, or potentially uh, some kind of uh, breakthrough, some piece of news or information that is uh, startling, exciting, inspiring. These are the kind of things to watch for when Mercury squares Uranus. And that for you is again going to activate in your 11th house of friends, um, especially uh, highlighting groups, organizations, things like that. Uh, now, if we go forward to the 12th and the 13th, again, it's just so busy this month. Uh, you've got Mars now squaring Pluto. Now this has the potential for those same topics of love and relationships and home and family to become a little bit more explosive, intense, um, and uh, potentially cathartic. So you you know know that you're walking through a bit of a minefield uh, around this middle of the month with regard to the topics of home, family, living environment, and um, relationships. Uh, there could be you know much more combative, confrontational energy there. You want to be really mindful of. All right. So going forward, um, and again, we could talk about any of these for quite a while. So you have to watch my, my videos on the, during this month. I'll be, I'll be doing a lot of videos on transits this month, and um, you can follow along and, and apply these to your birth chart with a little bit more depth. Now on August 19th, the new moon will be in Leo in your 11th uh, house. You can see it's just danced into Virgo here on my screen, but that's where the new moon is going to be in your 11th house on the 19th and um it'll um it'll be like late 18th into the 19th and uh the 11th house of course once again highlighting the importance of friends groups and organizations or something really new happening there for you this month that's a pattern that starts to stand out by later in the month for sure um now if we jump forward a little bit more to the 24th and 25th mars is going to uh square saturn um, and again, you're going from the seventh house of love and relationships back to the home place of home and family. Um, this, the one good thing about this is that Saturn is restraining Mars through its superior square. So that more confrontational energy between home, family, and relationships should find more constructive ways of, you know, of, of dealing basically of working within limitations or constraints by later in the month, sort of, sort of maybe holding back from some of our worst tendencies there. Um, so that's a good thing that Saturn can kind of help provide a little bit more um, structure and discipline for Mars who might feel more combative this month. Now, um, between say the 25th and the 26th, and then all the way to the 30th and 31st, um, Venus is going to oppose Jupiter and Pluto between your 10th and uh, fourth houses. I won't display it here. I'll just tell you those dates again. That's between, say, the 20, uh, right around the 24th, all the way through the end of the month, essentially, Venus will oppose Jupiter and then oppose Pluto. Um, that can be, there can be different kinds of, um, what do I want to say, like things that are happening in public, um, especially when, where you might be concerned about how things look or how things appear or, um, concern about harmonizing with different people or different intricate uh, aspects of a project or different people and personalities in the workplace. Basically, Venus is trying to provide harmony in your greater social world or your greater public life, while also contending with the forces of Jupiter and Pluto down in the house of home and family. So, um, you know, and you've, again, Venus is... Um, you know, sort of reiterating some of the things that Mars has gone through earlier this month for you. Uh, so, you know, what is the found, what are the foundation of your values of your home, of your family? Um, and, um, you know, basically what, what, what do you show to the world versus what's on the inside? Those kinds of tensions might become uh, more pronounced, uh, towards the end of the month when Venus opposes Jupiter and Pluto. Um, and any kinds of like family or like, I, I want to like, 
loosely say like collective communal group sort of tribal uh you know um connections that you have and the interrelationships and tensions emotionally within those groups could be a little bit more pronounced um, around the end of the month. Also a transformative time for intimacy and relationships. There can be sort of like more drama and, um, you know, some of the unconscious material in intimate relationships or within family could be coming to the surface toward the end of the month. All right. So that is a very, what's like a lightning round because there's so many transits. Um, for Libra. Let's, let's bring this back to the beginning of the month and start over for Aquarius. So if you are an Aquarius uh, rising, <clears throat> at the beginning of the month, the sun is going to square Uranus, and this is happening from the seventh to the fourth house. So for you, the seventh, fourth house tension, remember the sun Uranus generally creates breakthroughs, um, the sense of becoming more independent or individuated, the need to break free from different kinds of limitations. And this is happening between the house of home, family, living environment, and intimate relationships. So you watch for that right at the beginning of the month. And this is a theme that continues because by the third of the month, you're going to have a uh, new moon in the seventh house of relationships, or excuse me, a full moon across the first and seventh house. So the, the, the dichotomy between self and other the dichotomy between you know me and the needs that i have as an individual and the needs of others now the new moon in leo on the 19th of this month will fall into your seventh house of relationships and that will also highlight the importance of relationships in your life right now uh, where you where are you going in life um, how are you an individual versus where are we going and how are you a part of um, something that is greater than yourself in, in terms of others in your life that are very important to you? Those, that, that basic dichotomy is really big this month if you're an Aquarius rising. So um, now at the beginning of the month around August 3rd, Mercury is also going to oppose Saturn across your 12th and 6th house axis. So there is a kind of turnover that's happening this month um, the sixth and twelfth houses are kind of like liminal spaces. They're spaces where we are we're birthing something or we're laboring with something. It's not always easy. It can be taxing or draining. Uh, you want to take care of your your mental and emotional health this month, especially. Uh, and at the very beginning of the month, that tense that tension or stress is going to be building and accumulating. And you want to be careful that you're not being overly um, rigid uh, in your thinking or either um, that or too emotionally demanding, um, placing too much of an emotional burden on yourself or others. Those two extremes are something to be careful of around the beginning of the month. Now, Venus is also going to be conjunct the north node of the moon in the fifth house. Uh, that's a nice placement. The fifth house was traditionally called the house of good fortune. Uh, it kind of has a feeling of being a little lucky. Uh, you might, you know, for example, get a little financial help or gift around this time, or there might be um, some way in which, you know, for example, sometimes people get pregnant um, or there's uh, just kind of falling in love or you have a, you know, a romantic connection that's made or something that's creative and really enjoyable or pleasing, but it has a good like Venusian, uh, pl like pleasant um, harmonizing energy in a house that's associated with, you know, just sort of the good strokes of fortune that come our way that make us happy. So I think that's a nice little breather in the mix of, of things. So, you know, don't worry if the, the energies of this month sound a little tense. At the beginning, there's also this nice Venus North Node conjunction, which should be very helpful. Now, um, in the meantime, uh, right around August 4th, uh, Mars is going to square Jupiter between the 3rd and the 12th house. Um, that can, um, again, like with the the 12th house for Aquarians has been lit up for a, a while. And that usually means that there's, you're in a transitional space in your life. For Aquarians, that's going to start to clear up by December of this year. With this Mars energy that's coming through between now and the end of the year, it's going to go back and forth and retrograde back and forth between your third and 12th house. There's a kind of I want to call it a change of mind that's happening. You have to get more serious. There's going to be more effort, more work, more realism, more 
but you're growing up. There's something really important here. Um, it's a very important change of mind. Saturn has a superior square over Mars and is kind of checking Mars and helping you to become active and efficient and apply your will and energy in better ways, especially to help you see you through some kind of transitional space where you're, you're birthing something new or you're birthing a, um, a new project or a new you know, a new phase in your life. And you'll start to feel that come in in December when Jupiter and Saturn can join in your first house. So this Mars energy is kind of helping you push if you were in labor, you could say. Uh, so you, I know that's a little abstract, but watch for a kind of the feeling of needing to rise to meet some kind of challenge uh, right around the full moon, August 3rd and 4th. Now, if we go forward a little bit to August um, 9th and 10th, uh, between the 9th, oops, let me back this up so Aquarius is on the ascendant. There we go. So between the 9th and the 10th, Mercury is going to square Uranus. Um, and this has another, like oftentimes when Mercury squares Uranus, like the sun squaring Uranus at the start of the month, the, the feeling of mental um, breakthroughs, aha moments, epiphanies, insights that kind of reveal and inspire a different way of doing things, a way that often prov prov provides us with more freedom and independence, that throws off limitations, a revolution at the roots. Um, this could simultaneously involve relationships and the home and family life again. So that kind of energy is really strong uh, right around the um, 9th and the 10th. It is another Uranus moment. Now notice there's one at the start of the month, Sun square Uranus. There's one at the full moon, August 3rd, uh, the moon, full moon square Uranus, and then Mercury square Uranus between the 9th and the 10th. All of these have the feeling of upheaval and dramatic change and revolution, but probably a lot of excitement that goes along with it. Now, uh, when you get to August 12th and 13th, Mars will square Pluto in the 12th house again. There's that continued push. You're, you're moving through something right now. Um, for example, I have a client who's an Aquarius rising who is uh, pregnant and who will be moving in August, in the middle of August. Um, so this is like right on time for, for her to be, um, you know, dealing with basically, uh, a transitional space that's a little chaotic, but getting into a house that's really going to be your house to to have your start your family in, um, and uh, and 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 also you know a greater degree of of independence because the the place that she's living right now she was just telling me I just did a session with this woman and she was saying you know her place is like too cramped, right? So just a little illustration you could see it's something like that where there's a sense of needing to. Uh, you know, access a greater level of freedom, but kind of having to push through and struggle along the way. It's sort of, it's chaotic and stressful. I'm pregnant. Uh, you know, like, like that's a great story actually that like totally coincides with what's coming up this month. Now, um, all right. So if we go forward to the 19th, the new moon in Leo, again, we mentioned that earlier is in your seventh house of relationships. Um, so a uh, lot of emphasis on intimacy, love, relationships this month. And then the 24th and 25th, uh, Mars will square Saturn. Uh, so there's one more, you know, kind of push with, uh, let me move this forward now a little bit. So we go to the, tw like right around the end of the month now, you're going to see uh, Saturn and Mars from the 12th to the 3rd come through again. Now, again, like the third, if you think about the third as kind of like the activity and commotion of your, you know, everyday environment. And then you think of the 12th house as this kind of liminal space that's often uh, sort of contractive and labor heavy and you're, you're in between worlds. There's like marshalling your resources, your energy, and, you know, pushing through with a kind of mature, um, uh, you know, attitude because the uh, Saturn in the 12th is like meet your fate and accept it with, you know, a, our grown up pants on. And the Mars energy is going to say, and it's going to be busy And the, the immediate environment is going to be sort of permeated with this feeling of busyness and action. So that's the quality again, so much of this month and toward the end of the month, Mars squares Saturn. You're really at that point, it's like a, it's, it's like a, you know, it's like a well-disciplined military unit, like marching, you know, in unison that there should be a really like a feeling of like well-coordinated effort moving you through something, but it will probably be a little stressful. Um, now, uh, at the end of the month, say the 25th through the 31st, 
Venus is also going to oppose Pluto and Jupiter, um, or Jupiter and Pluto, I should say, across the 6th and the 12th house axis. Don't let the stress and tension that's mounting at the end of the month eat you up or sabotage relationships um, because the there's a little, maybe a little bit of drama coming in relationships with Venus going through the opposition to Jupiter and Pluto, um, especially if you have disagreements over how much to spend or, um, you know, s- things that might feel like Venus Jupiter opposition can be a little extravagant. Venus Pluto can be sort of like the dark side of overdoing things. Um, and also the Venus Pluto opposition in general can be about a sort of upheaval within intimate relationships. And we know because there's a new moon in your seventh house this month, full moon across your first and seventh house axis, a bunch of squares from the seventh house to Uranus in your fourth, um, that, you know, re- relationships play a very important role in this month. So, um, just try to live through them and, and, um, be careful that you're not being too demanding. Be careful that you're not, um, that people aren't demanding too much of you and just try to walk right through the middle. All right, so that's what I've got for you if you're an Aquarius rising. Let's go back and do this again uh, all over, and we'll do it for Gemini. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the month. I just can't believe, like, I've, I've in a while of doing this, I don't remember a month that had transits, like, basically every day of the month. Okay, let's put Gemini on the Ascendant. Now, At the very beginning of the month, you're going to see the Uranus. And if if you are a Gemini rising, you're looking at the Sun-Uranus square between the 3rd and the 12th house. Now, um, the emphasis on your cadent houses this month, on houses 3 and 9 through the lunar cycles, are really highlighted. You've got a new moon in Leo on the 19th in your 3rd house. You've got a full moon in Aquarius um, on the third in your ninth house. Um, And then you've got a couple of aspects from Mercury. Say Mercury is going to square Uranus between the ninth and the tenth, between your third house and Uranus in the twelfth house. So there's all of these aspects this month lighting up across your third, ninth, and twelfth house axis. If you're a Gemini rising, this is a month where your I want to say your spiritual or intellectual paradigm is changing. I'm used to seeing this kind of access get lit up when people are, say, you know, I've, I've met with some people who are in college, like a freshman in college, and they're being completely, they're, they're being inundated by these complicated forces at once. One, for example, might be the desire to party a lot. The other will be the desire to completely immerse themselves in some, some subject that for the first time in their life, they get to you know, they get to completely dive into and focus on. For example, you know, you might be at school as a freshman and you're a philosophy major and you're, you want to be totally immersed in philosophy or theology or religion or psychology or something that you're just completely fascinated by, but you might be torn between that and the sort of self-destructive element of uh, like partying and drinking all the time. Uh, the point is that the third and ninth house access being highlighted so much this month suggests the topics of the mind, learning, uh, religion, politics, teachers, teaching, education, technology, media, writing, um, that they're very activated, but they're also square to this Uranian energy in the 12th house, which is kind of prompting some kind of revolution. The revolution on the one hand could be positive, um, but alienating. For example, taking a risk. I don't believe this, uh, like maybe, you know, you're, it's a time where you're like, you know, I'm, I don't feel like being Catholic anymore or something like that, you know, where it's like I'm having some kind of intellectual or philosophical revolution and I feel the need to change my affiliation and I know that people are going, I'm going to be ostracized or that people are going to see me as some kind of heretic. Now that could be socially, intellectually, politically, religiously, who knows, but there's maybe some kind of risk that you're feeling like you need to take. And that's a good thing. On the other hand, it could also be that there is some impulse to depart from the status quo, that you're feeling or thinking something very different from what others around you are thinking. And you have to be very careful not to burn bridges or not to do something that's self-destructive in the name of self-indulgence or in the name of, you know, uh, kind of, you know, being a rebel, but but you don't do things tactfully enough. So that's the kind of energy that I see as very dominant for Gemini rising this month, uh, overall across 
that those three. And let me just repeat the um, the timing. Sun square Uranus on the first. That's from your third to your twelfth. Uh, you've got the full moon in Aquarius in your ninth on August third, square to Uranus in the twelfth. You've got Mercury in the third on August 9th and 10th, square to Uranus in the 12th. You've got the new moon in Leo on August 19th with a broad square, you know, still whole sign square to Uranus in the 12th, right? So that's what I'm saying. That, that, that's, your, that's a lot of the month. So I just wanted to break it down like that for Gemini risings. All right, so um, now let's move along and take a look at a couple of other things. At the beginning of the month, one thing that I really like if you're a Gemini rising is that you should be feeling actually really great because Venus is going to conjoin the North Node of the Moon, which is now in your first house. So in terms of like beautification, working out, um, becoming the, the better version of yourself somehow, you know, Venus in the first house can help with those things and then the North Node can kind of amplify it. You want to be careful that there's not kind of like a a vain, self-centered, overly indulgent quality. The North Node can amplify Venus almost to its detriment. Like this is the kind of thing that I sometimes see when people go and they spend, end up spending too much money or they get involved in um, a fling that ends up being really entangling because the other people, the other person like made them feel really, really good about themselves. Like, oh, you're so, you're so attractive, et cetera, et cetera. But then suddenly, you know, you're in a, you're in a, a relationship with someone that, that, you know, where you, you're kind of leading them on or you, you need to get out of it and it, it's not easy. So be careful because you may be very attractive at this, right, at this time, but you may not attract everything that is for your own good. Don't be blinded by the sort of sparkliness of, of Venus, but also, you know, it's, it's a great time for just for your charm or your intelligence or your creative qualities to be on display and to bring you positive um, things. So that's, that's pretty positive right around the beginning of the month. Now, um, the other thing at the beginning of the month is that, you know, Mercury is going to be opposite to Saturn across the second and eighth house axis. Um, there may be, uh, we're going to see this toward the end of the month as well, between say the Oh, like the 25th and the 31st, you're going to see Venus get into Cancer and then also oppose all three of these planets between the very end of August and the beginning of September. Um, so there's a little, a, a little bit of energy this month at the start of the month. Um, this Mercury opposite Saturn is like August 3rd, but then towards the end of the month, like the 25th or the 31st into the beginning of September, where there's a real polarization taking place uh, between the financial houses, second house, my money, my assets, my resources, my things, my possessions, and the eighth house, other people's or debts, obligations, burdens, contracts, things that we owe or have to negotiate with other people, um, you know, loans, it's, et cetera. Also the topic potentially of things like inheritance or issues around money and family or money and relationships could be really pronounced this month. So watch for those themes. You know, it comes up a little bit at the beginning of the month, comes back really big at the end of the month. The end of the month might have a little bit more to do with the the interplay between money and um, you know marriage or like more intimate relationships. So watch for those things. <clears throat> now, um, let's see. You know, between the twelfth and the thirteenth of the month, um, and you're going to see this at the beginning of the month too. You can see it right here. Mars is squared to Jupiter, and then Mars is later in the month going to get into squares with Pluto and uh, eventually Saturn too. And those play out <clears throat> here, you can see by uh, basically by August 13th, uh, 12th into the 13th, Mars will be squared to Pluto. This is between your 11th and 8th houses. But the, the topic of um, your friends of communities or groups or organizations and uh, of different kinds of karmic debts or obligations, things that you are working through. Um, those, um, those two areas are pretty charged this month. Uh, if you work for a company, if you're a part of a group of friends, don't be surprised if there's a little bit of drama um, and contentiousness and you know, try to let cooler heads, uh, cooler heads prevail. <clears throat> This is also a preview of an ongoing tension, a kind of karmic, um, what do I want to call it? A kind of, a, some kind of karmic contract that is being, that, that's sort of the, what, what are the right words? There, there is a, some, some kind of experience or un, unfolding of events that's going to happen between now and the end of the year that's going to 
really make you look very deeply into yourself, into your loyalties, um, into your values. Uh, and it's going to come up because of a kind of drama that's happening within the context of organizations, groups, or social circles. So, or maybe a particular friend even. All right. So um, that is the Mars energy of the month. That's pretty dynamic. Um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. I guess it's appropriate for Gemini. Uh, just kidding. Okay, let's see. Yeah, your ruling planet at the very end of the month, like this is, I think it's going to be like the 31st of the month. Yeah, it's going to be like the 30th and the 31st. And let me put Gemini back on. Uh, Mercury is going to oppose Neptune across your fourth and 10th house axis. Because that's your ruling planet, that's a pretty big moment for you. Um, Mercury gets to be, uh, is pretty empowered on the 17th of August. That's kind of a power day for you. Mercury's Kazemi with the sun. That's your ruling planet. Uh, Mercury goes into its exaltation in Virgo in the 19th and 20th. So gets pretty strong around the topic of home, family, living environment, uh, things from the past. And uh, some greater moment of, of creative uh, culmination or intellectual or communicative culmination happening around the very end of the month, uh, probably related to your workplace, um, but also tied into things like the past and, and family. Uh, for example, um, again, I'll just share something that this is actually from a, a friend of mine who I know is uh, going through a process of both moving next month and also is in the process of publishing a book. I would guess that those two themes are going to come into contact with one another rather dramatically where, you know, busy on something mercurial, uh, busy on something fourth house, writing a book and moving. Um, and also the, the 10th house Neptune, right? So what's happening in your career and how is it, how is it related to some kind of change that's happening relative to your more, your private sphere of life or your home, home life? Um, Neptune, Mercury can also be sort of bewildering, mystical, otherworldly. Um, and so, and you may be torn between different kinds of loyalties, those within those related to family and those related to something more professional or something more worldly that you're involved with. So watch for that to be kind of strong right at the end of the month and that'll carry over into September. All right. So that's what I've got for the air signs for this month. Uh, there was so much there. Um, I will be breaking down these transits one by one this month. So you can tune back in and get more information about each transit as we go. Uh, because I'll be doing a lot of, a lot of videos this month, breaking down each transit one by one. So thanks for following along and I hope you have a great month of August. We'll see you again soon. Bye.